Welcome back to Christo's Cafe. You know, I was watching This Week in Gwent this morning and I was thinking about it and Berger was going over some little details and he dropped the bomb that on Monday we're going to get an hour and about 10 minute dev stream or not dev stream, dev video uh, walking through patch 8.3 and I thought to myself, what could be in that patch? Now I know I normally do patch review videos. This is going to be the first time I'm going to do a patch preview video. I'm just kind of guessing at some of the things that we might see based on the information that's been shared so far. So you may be asking what's on the menu. Let me tell you. First off, we're going to talk briefly about this week in Gwent, exactly what uh, Powell discussed and uh, we'll go through if any of that might be relevant to this Monday's patch. I then want to revisit patch 8.2. Um, you know, there's a few things people were complaining about or didn't love about the meta. So let's see if patch 8.2 did in fact tackle those. And if it didn't, then what are we going to do about it in patch 8.3? All that and more right after this intro. All right, so let's start by talking about this week in Gwent. Uh, Paul Berger went on for about 20 some odd minutes, gave us a quick outline of what we are going to expect, what might go on, and a little bit of news about patch 8.3. So like I mentioned in my intro, one hour and 10 minute video from Slama and Berger about this patch. So my initial thought around patch 8.3 was after 60 some odd changes in patch 8.2 we're probably not going to see that many in 8.3 it looks like that might not be the case now they did mention that they were going to go through the roadmap as well so let me pop that open here we also have the roadmap that Berja accidentally flashed on the screen i don't know if it was true or not i don't know if it was intentional or not but we did get a quick view of this and of course those quick fingers of twitch viewers went and snagged this roadmap so other than patch notes and balance changes we're talking about the roadmap now within this roadmap we're looking at it and you're going to see the four journeys that we already expected it's pretty much going to be consistent they're doing well for the business the players like them so we're going to see four journeys this year of course we're in yennefer's journey right now based on what's happened previously um, it seems like they're going to alternate male, female, which likely means the summer journey could very well be Triss because I know team Triss is a little bit peeved that we got Yen first, but, um, after Yen, you know, some of the rumors out there, sorry, I, I have taken some notes. Um, Zoltan and Yorveth have come to mind, uh, as potential dudes that might fill in this gap. So nothing is confirmed. Everything is completely guesswork at this point but i would imagine tris is seen before the end of the year so the team tris doesn't completely lose their mind now slama also last year talked about 12 card a 12 card drop or maddox times 12 i believe were his exact words coming at the end of march ish and that seems to be consistent so we're gonna have those 12 cards at the end of march again my scouring of reddit and whatnot it seems as though Slama mentioned about a year ago that they are going to be using those old leader cards, those old leader artwork in new cards. Now, there was more than 12 old leaders. They could be in part some of these 12 cards. They may not be. 12 cards, six factions. I'm going to assume we're going to get two cards per faction. But the question then becomes how drastically are these going to impact the meta? I'm going to assume based on the fact that these are in March, they're probably going to be at the end of March, AKA next patch. So maybe even beginning of April, but that also goes to ask the question, are there going to be new archetypes introduced, new styles of cards? Maddock, you know, made bombs viable when they really weren't a thing before. So that was kind of interesting is how they can play into what currently exists and add to that. 12 cards would be a nice way since each faction will likely only get two to kind of revisit some things that currently exist. But what would have to happen for that to be the case? We would likely see some changes to current cards. So some of those underused cards that they buff could very well be a part of the supporting factor of these 12 cards. Now, I don't know if that'll happen in 8.3, which is coming out on Tuesday, or it's going to happen next month in April along with those 12 cards. So we might see the first iterations of some of those changes that are made next week in that patch. Now, the interesting part of this roadmap is EP 7.1, 7.2, 7.3, and then 
Could these be expansions? Could these be expansions that are now split into three separate sections, three separate mini sets, in essence, to continue to um, tweak the meta and allow it to not get too, uh, too boring or too repetitive? That's what this seems to be. This blue line looks like it's card drops, looks like it's new content. So could we be seeing three mini sets? How would they be broken down? By a faction? Are they going to be a couple cards for each faction? Are they going to all have their own kegs? Are these going to be simply added into previous kegs? We don't know anything about this. I'm sure the dev stream will talk about it more on Monday. But this is a really, really interesting way to not have to worry about including more content in the sense of an extra expansion but take the current expansion and break it down into smaller chunks. So we typically see what? Between let's say 70, 80, maybe even 90 cards on the high end in an expansion. Divide that by three, 30 cards. That could easily be about four cards per faction plus a couple neutral cards. So there's a few different ways they can go about doing this. I love this idea. So I'm hoping this is in fact the case. Uh, and this is in fact what they're going to do. So fingers crossed that they do actually go through the roadmap here. Talk about it in more detail as to what these expansion symbols or ep symbols mean we don't even know if it's expansions i have to assume that's what it is so let's keep an eye on that and hope keep our fingers crossed that they give us some more details and that this does continue to keep the meta fresh just checking my notes but i think that pretty much covers it the only thing the only thing that we were guaranteed to come is a hattori rework now i don't know why this i think it was mentioned at some point um as to what was going to happen with them and it ended up in the q a so berger posted on the cdpr message boards some an open opportunity to ask some q a and uh mr hattori came up and he apparently is going to get a rework on tuesday so play a bronze artifact from your graveyard this is unfortunate because the only bronze artifacts are traps that's it there's three of them that's pretty much all there is um period right if you scroll all the way down you've got your crushing trap your um actually two sorry one's premium even though it's not moving weird um anyway you're incinerating track and you're crushing trap so it's a little bit sad uh oh wait i lied you've got you've got a couple you got the petri filter you've got the wyvern scale shield and you've got the mastercrafted spear um anyway long story short there's things that just don't see play. So I'm curious to see if he's going to continue to go along with that artifact style or not at all. Side note Merchants of uh, Novograd podcast did a phenomenal job of photoshopping this face onto that card. So I will drop, um, I'll drop that here somewhere because I think it's funny. Anyway, moving right along, since we've been through that, what I want to touch on is I actually want to touch on the Season of Love patch 8.2. The reason I want to do this is I think a lot of this is going to play into 8.3. There are some a few changes here that I think affected the meta in certain ways. So I want to revisit that quickly and see what we can extrapolate from this to take a look at 8.3 and what we might get. So first things first, we've got the locks that the changes uh, that were made to the locks, right? Dora Gray, Aguara, things like that, which I think were great. Um, we're starting to see a few more locks out there, but nothing um, super oppressive. So no problem there. Now, the D-bomb, Red Haze, um, we saw a couple bombs get buffed and Maddox was already out there and Maddox was already doing a pretty good job. He was in the meta pretty solid there. I'm curious if he gets touched at all. Now, the problem is I don't know exactly what you do to him. Three power, you click, does three damage. The balance there is nice. The bombs are solid. Do you just increase his provisions maybe by one just to shift it? I know a few players are a little bit irritated seeing him around as much as we are. Um, so I wouldn't want to kill him. I would just want to maybe make him a little bit more limited in the way of how he gets put into decks. I don't know that you nerf a bunch of bombs. I don't think at least. I don't think that's the case or how you go about it. So it might be about Maddox particularly, specifically. But for example, changing Maddox to two power click for two damage is probably not very good. Or Cataclysm for two turns, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. Actually, you couldn't do Cataclysm because you have to change the card itself or the... The, I don't even know what to call it. You'd have to change Cataclysm itself. Regardless, that's probably not happening. So I can only imagine a provision change is really the only way to affect Maddox. Um, the rest of the stuff is pretty much uneventful. Maxi does show up pretty regularly now, which is neat. Xavier Lemons never shows up, sad boy. And Yen is not a big deal. Overwhelming Hunger. So this is one that's a bit controversial. We've seen Crimson Curse show up now more often. So that is based on this change. Uh, Crimson Curse has showed up. 
Overwhelming Hunger, unfortunately, has not. Kelly and now recently Swarm, um, Araka Swarm, have been the only lists we've seen. I would love to see Overwhelming Hunger tweaked back, given a little bit more power. Uh, hasn't happened yet and probably won't happen this patch, though it might be a thing in the future. We've got Vi. Vi was nerfed. Leader was nerfed. Vi is dead. Knock on wood. Vi is mostly dead. I am perfectly fine with that. I don't care if Vi, V, whatever, never comes back. Totally cool with it. I'm just going to move on. Uh, nice to see the Wild Hunt Hound show up every now and again. Skilliga, 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 Skilliga. Um, this is all pretty fine. Not Nothing drastic. Obviously, Jenge is here more often, which is cool. Heron Kaduk. Kaduch? Kaduk? Heron Kaduk? I'm going with Heron Kaduk. Healing change from three to two. It's still very powerful. It's still in just about every build you will see from Skilliga. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, per se. I don't think it's completely ridiculous, but it's still pretty high-powered. I think Heron stays. Lippy nerf. Um, You know what? I saw this Lippy nerf. The power change from four to three and provision boost by one. And I was like, this is really not enough. This is not nearly enough. And come to think of it, I do see less lippy on the ladder. Not drastically, not a significant amount, but I feel like there's a bit less lippy out there. So if that's the case, phenomenal. I'm perfectly happy with this. But let's take it back for a second and let's talk about Saris. Because I think Saris is such a huge part of the lippy list and now is also becoming the number one Skilliga warrior list as well with her scene warrior. So Saris is everywhere. Um, you know, with the leader pretty much guarantees you um, like 15 points off of one card and a ping and the pings you want to remove because you want the bear. Like it's, it's interesting. I think she's fairly strong. People were talking about before the lippy nerf to just doom the uh, shield maiden that she pops out. I don't even know if that's the best way of going about it. I'm not entirely sure. I do feel like she needs a little tweak, maybe bumping the provision up by one because she's just so darn consistent, gets you thinning, gets you points. Um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed to seeing her boosted by one provision wise. Um, but just a thought out there. Let's keep scrolling down. We've got Northern Realms. Very little was changed in Northern Realms. We see a Margarita, which is kind of nice. Uh, she gets pulled by AA keeps devotion. So I think this is really nice that she got the buff both ways, power and provision. Um, so really cool. The rest of this didn't really make much of a change. The ranger getting like that row punish kind of deal is sort of meh. Um, not much changed here. Witchers continue to be pretty much the number one or one of the number one tier one decks, sorry, in the game. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a few little changes maybe to uh the nr witchers like if i look at the general nr witcher list i have one here with and say this in it um i mean i would say that the adepts at four for four with a shield are a little bit on the low end like they could they could potentially be five provisions and things would still be cool um but i don't even know how else you would change this because you already have like these are neutral cards so you can't drastically affect them without affecting the faction it just doesn't feel like a northern realms deck right the main power comes from Vez, comes from the Witchers, comes from Leo, who are not necessarily part of that faction at all. Earl could maybe be changed to only boosting Northern Realms cards, could make it a bit more interesting and add more variety to the deck. I don't think this thing needs a huge, huge nerf. I don't think Northern Realms needs a huge nerf whatsoever. I think just a little tweak, uh, bringing their power level down a little bit, would be neat to see, though. Um, if we jump into Scoia'tael, they had a bunch of changes. Uh, Kieran, the lock makes perfect sense. We see that. Catwitchers uh, getting changed. The Saboteur still doesn't get played. The Catwitcher itself with the adrenaline change has changed nothing. I don't know that they needed any change, to be honest. Scoia'tael's in a pretty good spot. They have, what, th at least three types of decks. The no units stuff, uh, Nature's Gift, and Ambush that you're seeing pretty readily. So I don't think there's any issue here with uh, with Skoya. I think you can kind of leave them the way they are and everything's pretty much uh, fine. Though Harmony is going to need more love. This was not enough. So maybe we see some Harmony uh, boosts continue to go on in uh, 8.3. Not sure about it, though. Um, Nova Gradient Justice. This nerf was huge. You still see it played. You see it played less often. You see it played more in Syndicate. I love this change. I think it also takes power away from those no unit decks that are just annoying. No unit decks, Kelly decks. Those two to me are not my favorite things for the game, and I don't know that they're great for the meta itself. 
simply because it almost encourages you to discard your units and things instead of actually playing cards and playing a game. So I don't love that. I would love to see them nerfed. I don't know how exactly you would do it, to be entirely honest, but I think this was a nice way of going about it. You really, really limit their point slam. So if they get behind in round one, let's say on blue, they can lose on even, and that makes no unit decks a little bit more challenging to play. Totally cool with this. Nilfgaard, Nilfgaard. Um, so Nilfgaard, where do I start here? So these changes, for the most part, totally cool with them. Uh, the pikeman, it's fun. The ox change, cool. The viper thing, whatever. Uh, imprisonment still needs more love. It's still not getting played. The viper witcher mentor. The buff that nobody asked for. That I, I'm almost convinced nobody even thought was a thing. Um, I'm realizing now that this might be a bit small on the screen, so I'm gonna boost that up. But um, yeah, like, 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 why? Why is this here? So I think we've all established that, you know, you can end up playing like six of these in a game if you throw necromancy and other silly shit in your deck. Um, otherwise, with location, Vigo, and two in your deck, you get four, which is already excessive. So um, this needs to get nerfed. I don't even know if, I guess Adrenaline 2 is fine. The reason why Adrenaline 3 is tough is because you can play them in almost every round. You can fall behind pretty significantly in round one, and with three cards left in hand, you're not in a terrible spot. You drop the Mentor, it plays for 12, 13, 14 points potentially. And that's really, really difficult when you're trying to respond to it. If you're only doing that at card three, it makes it a little bit less preventative to play into a deep round that isn't round three with Nilfgaard. Also would prevent them from playing three of them plus Colgrim in round three. Now you'd get two plus Colgrim. I definitely think uh, these need to be changed back at the very least if they don't need to be nerfed more. Cloggers, Colgrim, I also don't think is particularly great for the game. Just a personal opinion. I don't love, you know, I've played a lot of card games and when you talk, start talking about things that really handicap players and how they're able to play, I don't like mill, I don't like discard, and I don't like cloggers because it's essentially reverse mills. So those three things I don't enjoy in my card games typically. I know like Hearthstone has talked about how they don't want discard archetypes really built into the game because of things like that i would look you're not going to change the archetype i know people are complaining or people have said that you know it doesn't belong in the game here's the thing you're not going to take all these cards out of the game i think it's fun sprinkled into decks there's a double maddock list out there that plays um you know plays coded weapons and things like that as removal but also as clog because i think the proper removal like that can just throw off synergy which i i really enjoy I think you take Colgrim and you boost them to 10 points. Uh, 10 points. 10 provisions. Sorry. Jesus. 10 provisions. What that does, takes them out of a Nova list. So it takes that archetype out, which I think is fine. It now also prevents them from being renewed, which is fine. And you know what? If you really say, I don't just want to boost them by one. I want to give them a little something. Put an armor on him. Put armor on him. He doesn't die to, to the boats anymore. I don't even care. I think that's fine. I think my big thing there, boost him by one give him an extra provision, but give him something else. Give him a shield. Totally cool. Let's just get him out of the Nova decks, get him away from Renew. And I think he is perfectly acceptable uh, because those full, I say full as if Nova decks aren't full, but those full out uh, Colgrim lists are not as difficult to deal with. I don't think as the, I'm going to renew my defender, renew my Colgrim, renew my whatever, let the and all that jazz. Um, that's a pain in the ass. So I kind of like it better that way. Okay, we've got Syndicate. Um... Yeah, this is just sad. I don't know. I don't really know what to say. I don't really know what to talk about here with Syndicate. Um, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of left with a little bit of a blank here. They need help still. Um, I don't think they're terrible. I still think they're playable. I don't think they're nearly at the same power level as the other factions. I wish I could offer more tips here. I'm really not the best with Syndicate to begin with. I think Louisa uh, moving in the right direction here. Fallen Rayla still is not seeing much play. Um, you know, the failed experiment and stuff like that is, is good. Like they have some good tools. The lack of synergy and the self poison is a little bit scary. So this stuff here helped tremendously, the lackey and the mage. I like the ability to boost and gain coins. This is so much more synergistic with what Syndicate is than the self poison stuff I find. So I really, really like this. Um, I think they can continue to go in this direction. Let's continue to boost. Let's continue to boost on coins because these can be dropped into just about any Syndicate deck and actually provide value, whereas self poison needs the full archetype and they're still missing a little bit of payoff. 
as much of a, saliv a salamander board clear meme is fun. It's just that it's a meme. So I think that pretty much covers what I wanted to go over. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we think we might see in patch 8.3, but you know, with Kelly being up there, I don't know how Kelly actually gets nerfed either. Now that I think about it, how would you nerf a Kelly deck? Uh, or how would you tweak that ability? Carapace giving Veil is super interesting and I love the ability. I played against a vampire deck where Veil um, prevents their vampire bleeding engines from, um, from being locked, which I think is brilliant. It was a really, really smart way of playing it. They were running the uh, Necarat and that was great. So I feel like taking away Veil from the leader is just another way to punish a leader for a card that's maybe not entirely fun. Maybe it doesn't get nerfed at all because it is such a, um, it's a little bit niche. It can be beaten in a lot of situations. It can be countered. Maybe Siri Dash is the answer. The more I, I've only started playing Kelly recently, but the more I play Kelly, the more I start to realize that Siri Dash is really the key to this deck. It eats up a ton of removal or it gets you a card. So I think that is absolutely something that could be reviewed, but I think part of what I would love to see in 8.3 is just more options for monsters, maybe a little buff to some vampires. You took away Overwhelming Hunger, but they wasn't really replaced by anything. So Araka Swarm has shown up a little bit in that place. Kelly has mostly taken that step, but monsters are going to be a little bit underplayed without Overwhelming Hunger as an option. So maybe a little bit of love for our friendly neighborhood vamps and we'll be in, uh, in better shape there. Only other thing I say maybe looking at is some of the precision strike stuff, you know, the no unit kind of deal. But again, I don't know how you would go about and prevent this from happening. You've got your number of units you need in the deck. I don't think you can do much more to force people to play units. And you don't want to, you want to give that flexibility to do different things. Just frustrating to play against. Sabretooth Tiger has turned out to be quite powerful in some situations, not all. I don't think it necessarily needs a lot of work. Um, I do know they need to clean up some of the interactions since it's the first artifact beast we have. But um, I would personally like to see that because I, I just think that from an overall perspective, it would be more interesting to have more games where you're actually solving problems on the board as opposed to just drop something, it dies, drop something, it dies, rinse and repeat. Um, as I'm looking through the rest of my, my stuff and just kind of thinking back, you know, I don't think there's much else in the game that really, really strongly needs to work. Obviously, NG... We talked about it. Those mentors need to go. The lockdown ability as a whole is probably the last thing I want to talk about. Lockdown needs to exist in this game. Lockdown needs to exist because it needs to be able to control anything that gets out of hand in the easiest of ways. Fed up of the meta, annoyed by certain decks. You drop lockdown, you have as much of a chance as anybody else, and you're limited in provisions. So you have to build your deck around it. I think that's great. I think it makes perfect sense. The problem becomes when lockdown itself becomes meta, it's typically a lot of other cumulative issues from elsewhere in the game that come together and force people to play it. And the problem is, and that was Vi in most cases, but now people have realized, hey, lockdown's strong. Lockdown is good. I'm not giving up that much based on the provisions. And when lockdown is like the only, and it's not exactly the only viable NG list, but it's way up there. If I look at the TLG meta report, you know, they've got like three or four different lockdown NG options, and I'd love to see more variety from them. So I don't know if it's a case where you leave lockdown alone and you go and you boost the other NG um, leaders to be able to kind of match up some of that that uh, competitive scale, or if you just make some tweaks to lockdown. The thing is, you can't lower their provisions anymore, I don't think. Um, and the ability can't really change because it's so straightforward. So I'm curious if there is a rework there that happens in 8.3 or not. I'm curious if there are going to be other leader reworks as well. Again, just to try and balance that out because we all know there's quite a few leaders that just don't see play or anything at all. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, this is, like I said, the first time that I have done this kind of uh, preview of a patch or what we're expecting. So leave comments below. Let me know if you liked it, didn't like it, think I'm full of shit or not. I will be doing a review of the actual patch notes. They're supposed to come out on Monday. So expect Monday or Tuesday, um, a video that kind of runs through all of that and maybe compares it to what we think today. So you do not miss that. Go ahead, hit the follow, this follow button. Sorry, this is not Twitch. Hit the subscribe button uh, on my channel and then you will get a notification as to when my next video drops. Otherwise you can always come bug me, twitch.tv slash the one Christo Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday. I will see you there in Christo's Cafe. Oh, what a lovely tea party.